Hello, I'm going to make another video for this channel. I've not made videos for this channel in ages because I realized that I wasn't very good at making them. I am boring, I go on for too long, and I say erm a lot. I'm not very engaging, hence why I've been doing more writing. Uh, also, I don't believe that I'm the best guy to give you scientific advice on training. It's just not me. There are far smarter people out there and far better people at making videos. But anyway, I'm going to make this one just because I feel that I should. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, advice kind of banded around the internet as of late based on whether you should sumo or conventional and that is uh, related in this advice to your torso length versus your arm length. Uh, there was an article brought out um, a journal article called Improving the Deadlift, Understanding Biomechanical Constraints and Physiological Adaptations to Resistance Exercise. And, uh, you know, I saw one such video by some uh, American kids, all deadlifting, and uh, they'd taken one table within this article, which uh, related your segment length, to which style of deadlift you should, uh, you should do. And um, the recommendations on this table are, uh, they're not bad as such, uh, but I feel that they've been misinterpreted. And um, to take these recommendations, this these factors, your segment lengths, as the only factor uh, that you should consider um, when choosing the type of deadlift that you should do, I just think that's absurd. However, these uh, these American kids, have uh, they've really kind of balled it up as uh, the one thing that determines whether you should be a good sumo puller or a good conventional puller. And um, they've taken the whole thing out of context. There are more factors to that, to uh, than that, sorry, um, which determine whether you should pull sumo or conventional. Um, you know, uh, for example, I pull sumo, I have very long arms and a short torso, which, go, which flies in the face of uh, the way this article, which is a very well 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 written article, uh, says you should do it. Um, yeah, long arms, short torso. That's me, and I pull sumo very well. Uh, also, um, the woman who got me into powerlifting, Tanya George, she's got long arms, short torso, uh, and she pulls sumo very well. Also, um, th there are a group of other people who train at Olympic gym. A group of other good powerlifters, uh, we all deadlift, and um, you know the guys with the short arms and long torsos who should be suited to sumo aren't necessarily, uh, you know that their strength isn't bad, but the way they actually, you know, set up and the way they execute the lift sometimes looks quite awkward compared to uh, myself, uh, who pulls sumo very technically well. Uh, see, the thing that is misunderstood is that if you have long arms and a short torso, that will make you better at deadlifts full stop, okay? So, what the article, I think, is trying to point out is that if you have short arms and a long torso, pulling sumo will make the range of motion less, will make it easier to reach down for the bar, to the bar, and should therefore give you an easier time uh, deadlifting. However, it's not the be all and end all. You know that this uh, this recommendation is not the be all and end all. There are other things to consider. Now, the reason I started pulling sumo was I'd had a year off deadlifting due to the fact that I've got a weird wonky spine, I have scoliosis. Um, I didn't think that conventional deadlifting, this is while I was bodybuilding, was doing my back any good. So uh, I I tried sumo once, and the very first time I ever tried sumo, I pulled 260 kilograms, which is, I don't know, it's just under 600 pounds, I pulled it for a double. Um, that was a, a little bit off what I'd done conventional in the past, but bear in mind I'd trained conventional deadlifts for years and years before that. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't have the levers for sumo, I apparently do not have the levers for them, but I have very big quads, very big glutes, and uh, you know, good big strong adductors. So there's a fact to take into consideration that these daft American kids have made a video. Of, you know, that they made a video about uh, sumo versus conventional, entirely based on segment length. And they're there, like you know, oh look, here's Tanner. 
Wow, Tanner's got short arms and a long torso. He just pulled 615. Um, and then they've got, you know, on the other hand, man, here's Brad. He's got long arms and a short torso. He's meant to pull conventional. Wow, Brad put 450. Um, not only the fact, you know, that these numbers are not that impressive, um, they're, they're, they're very gung-ho and very uh, confident about the fact that, you know, segment length is the only thing to consider when, uh, when, when choosing the type of deadlift that you should choose. And uh, I'd like to encourage you to take other factors into consideration, like what is strong on you? Are your legs the strongest? Are your quads and your, and your glutes the strongest? And therefore, making you a little bit more suited to sumo. Do you have very good flip, hip flexibility, making you more suited to sumo? Uh, do you actually have a very strong back and very strong hamstrings and are you just better at pulling conventional? Does it just feel more comfortable to you? Um, see, that's that's what it was with me. I, uh, I didn't know that I'd be a great sumo puller, but I persevered with it for months. Uh, it's the same with Dan Green. When he first started pulling sumo, he, um, he could only pull 220 sumo, yet he pulled 300 conventional. And, uh, you know, that didn't discourage him from trying sumo for a bit longer. And now, you know, his, his best sumo pulling comp is 300. So it's more about trial and error. Science is a wonderful thing. And if you read journal articles, or if you base your training, sorry, on journal articles and science, you should look at the data yourself. You should interpret it yourself. And you should see the articles that people's advice is based on. You should not just take someone's advice, you know, for gospel, especially if this person is trying to grow their business and if their, uh, their information that they put out there seems very gimmicky. I would always second guess it and I would always trust yourself more than anything. Trust what feels right, get in tune with your body, and more importantly than anything, be consistent with your training. And uh, when you when you find a method, stick to it. Despite when you find a method that feels right, I'm sorry, stick to it. Despite what people say about what you should do, it's not about what you should do. You stumble upon things by accident sometimes, and uh, they they turn out to be the best things that you ever tried. I would have not got into powerlifting unless I tried just tried sumo deadlifts. I found that I was okay with them, I persevered, I got very good at them, or I got, okay, good at them, not very good as I would like to be. Uh, and then I've got this bunch of American kids on YouTube telling me that I should be a conventional deadlifter. Oh, okay. Um, no thanks, I think, uh, I think I'll do just fine sumo. Um, you know, so there are no rules out there. You know, don't, don't listen to the rules. Be your own scientist. And uh, don't listen to some fucking idiots who have misinterpreted an article which uh, clearly states that there are other factors than segment length that should determine the way you deadlift. Um, I'd just like to point out that the article is actually very good and very well written. It's the interpretation of the information within the article which has led to people being very confused. So, that's it. This video is still shit, but, oh well. So what? No one watches it anyway, so not that many, many people are going to, not that many people are going to judge me because not many people actually watch the channel or the videos on the channel. Okay, that's it. Bye.